Upon opening the box of this solar kit, we immediately find the solar charge controller. This employs pulse width modulation technology, more commonly known as PWM. The buttons feel good to the touch. It appears that much heat should not be generated inside this unit because the back is made of plastic and not of a good conductive material like aluminum. This controller includes its printed manual with instructions for any adjustments we might need. The kit also includes a solar panel manual that is common to several models from 10 watt power to 100 watt. The module includes cables for electrical connections with alligator clips or O-rings depending on the type of battery you have. The panel is predominantly black in color which indicates is monocrystalline. On the label of the technical details, relevant information appears that we will take into account in the upcoming setup and measurements videos. Depending on the type of installation we carry out, the solar panel cable may be a bit short and need to be extended. The junction box is well fixed to the body of the panel with some type of adhesive. Initially, this solar kit has made a very good impression on me. In this second video, we have attached the solar panel and the charge controller to a board that will later move to take measurements outdoors with the incidence of the sun. First, we must connect the controller to the battery. Although the cables included in the set already have the polarity mark, I suggest checking it again to prevent malfunction or possible damage to the controller. We can check the continuity between the positive terminals using a multimeter, for example. If this is correct, we proceed to connect the cables to the controller respecting the indicated polarity. It is very important to first connect the terminals to the controller and then to the battery and not the other way around. When the controller is connected to the battery, it will start to detect the voltage and adjust its setting to 12 or 24 volt. In this case, it is a 12 volt gel battery and it is set at that voltage. The connections must be firm, but not over tightened. The controller tells us that this battery has 13.2 volt. Here I do a check to see if the indicated voltage matches that of my multimeter and they do match. The next step would be to check the solar panel to see if it indicates any voltage and to know if its connections and polarity are correct. Despite being illuminated by artificial light, it is able to reach a certain voltage. If we project shadows on the panel, the voltage decreases and that is correct. We proceed to connect the solar panel to the controller and use the same cable it comes with without extending it. In practical situations, the controller should not be placed facing the sun, but in another place away and in the shade. We connect it here just for demonstrations. The controller shows the solar panel connected icon. The first setting I recommend is to adjust the type of battery to which the controller is connected. In this case, it is a gel battery and should be set to parameter B02 as indicated in the user manual. How much current do the USB ports of the controller support if we connect a variable load? Initially, I set the discharge to 2 amperes, but this current does not seem to be supported. A realistic value is 1.5 to 1.6 amperes. Regarding the load output of the controller, this exceeds the measurement capacity of the constant current discharge module I have. The current measurement values of the controller are accurate and match those of the discharge module. After setting different discharge current values, the values match. Having made all the necessary connections and having verified that the voltage and current values given by the charge controller are reliable, all that remains is to take measurements under the sun, which will be the content of the next video. In this third and final video, we will perform the performance measurements of this solar kit. Initially, I make all the connections as detailed in video 2 of this series. Navigating through the various screens offered by the charge controller, we can see that the charging current is 1.2 amperes, a value that matches the one provided by the manufacturer. In this case, we calculate the power by multiplying this current value by the battery voltage, which is 13.6 volts. The instantaneous power is 16.3 watts. This value is below the nominal value of 20 watts given by the manufacturer. But it is logical considering that it was not a very sunny day or that the angle of incidence of the sun relative to the panel surface was not exactly 90 degrees. I repeated the current measurement with a DC clamp meter and the value was 1.05 amperes. But this instrument is usually less accurate than the direct measurements provided by the controller. Finally, I think it is a good solar kit.